Welcome. <laughs> we are here. Welcome, friends. So, Welcome, everyone. <laughs> so we're a little late. We had some technical difficulties, but it's me. I'm here, Dr. Wilhelmina. Thank you for joining me. And if you watch this on replay, so glad you did. And my guest today is Mr. Wiley Calhoun. Hello. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure being on your call. I thank you very much for inviting me. Yes. It's an honor. Yes. Glad to have you here, even though we went through these challenges getting you in. So <laughs> we're going to be talking about finance today. And we're just really having a conversation, Wiley and myself. So join our conversation. So Wiley, first, how do you know me? We went to school together, um, junior high. We went to high school together. It was a wonderful experience. And uh, you were one of my cheerleaders of fabulous time, watching you cheer and just your energy, running track, um, enjoying all of that. You were very athletic and very talented. And then we met up again uh, through Facebook a number of years later now and going through uh, just reuniting and getting to know each other once again and finding out all of your wonderful experiences that have been a doctor and your travels and all of that has just been amazing. Um, very talented young lady. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I, I would say that, um, honestly, I remember names more than I do people. I've been so many places around the world. There's a lot of stuff in my head, a lot of things. So, um, my, uh, most memorable is when you wrote your book and, mm -hmm. Of course, I should have looked that up. But when you wrote your book and we reconnected on Facebook and I did remember you from homeroom in junior high. We went to Hunt Junior High, <laughs> which is now called, a, I think, a middle school. And it's still there, right? Yes, it is. It yeah, is, yeah. rightly enough. So yeah. it's amazing yeah. that it's there after all these years. I thought they would have gotten down and they've redone a lot of that community. So uh, yeah. It's, yeah. it's a fixture. Yeah, but the remember the... Um, the round thing where we had lunch, the auditorium, yeah. or whatever it was. The cafeteria. Yeah. It, it, yeah. Yes. Yes. But it's not used. It's But it's the physical structure is still there. It is. Wow. Well, I remember yeah. when, before I went there, I was younger. When we just got up into this area, we would drove past there. And uh, I looked at it and I was thought, wow, I want to be able to play basketball in there. I thought that was the <laughs> gymnasium. So. <laughs> no, that's where we had lunch and there was a stage. Um, so I guess whenever we had events, they were in there mm -hmm. and I can remember being a little girl and my sister and my cousin, cause my cousin had moved from Oklahoma and some other people, they were, it was a big talent show and there was some fashion part of it and they had me dressed up in some little outfit. And I remember I was just a little girl at the time <laughs> and it was in that, in that, um, auditorium and on stage, I remember, and I remember somebody burnt the original outfit with an iron and so they had took some material and kind of tied it on <laughs> kind of like the Hawaiian thing or the more the Samoan with the lava lava kind of thing and right. um, it was so funny that I even remember that I hadn't thought about that in years but that was that's a good memory <laughs> yeah it was, it was so this morning we're going to talk about finance and we, we titled this this session financial challenges equal stress so um we we have to mention stress some of the ideas of stress i know in the past i was a big procrastinator like if i had a difficult time and me too pay something i'd procrastinate but what happens when you procrastinate <laughs> It makes it, it work, it right? Does. Yes, right. it does tremendously. Right, so, right, right, right. I used right. to be in that same boat that you were in. A procrastinator. It took me yeah. years. I'm still on some things that way. I think that's a habit that a lot of us have that we need to get over with, and uh, that's one of the things that it does cause you stress. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. to, if you don't realize it, um, you're yeah. running late for something. You're running late for an event because you procrastinated getting in your car getting there on time um today was this for me just a little bit of that temperature going up but not getting in the room on time so everything in life can cause you just a little bit of that if we look yeah. through it every day yeah. so you're saying you experienced that this morning then right 
<laughs> yes, the touch of that, just a little bit of challenges with that. So um, that's something that I always admit to people. I'm very open and honest with that. Yeah. It's a growing lesson. Every day from my life has been a growing lesson. I think we all go through it. Yes. Yes. Continue uh, long. Except for these events, I'm one of those people. Like, I like to wait to the last minute. Well, it's not really the <laughs> last minute. I like to just be on time. I'm not one of those be there early or you're gonna or you're late, right? I'm not one of those. Um, unless it's something I just, you know, like some some of our meetings at work. Yeah, I try to get there at 15 minutes early. And then this this is on me, right? So I'm taking great care and I'll get here way early. But as a guest, <laughs> you didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> that did, but we had issues with the um this system here. So I don't know why the first link didn't work, but this one did. Thank goodness you're here. Okay. Yeah. So some more stress. Let's think about what are the other stressors that people experience um, around finance? What do you think? It is honestly a few different things that I come across is people are in the fear of finance, fear of money, yeah, um, yeah. whether it's looking at it from a standpoint of I don't have enough to pay my bills or I don't have enough to pay for my car insurance or anything like that. Um, pay for your kids to go to school at the right places. You're always worried about debt. It, it's something that people yeah. do naturally and uh, they have a fear. Of it. And being in finances, I've even come to the point where people are afraid of money. Yes. Yes. As much as that sounds like I go to offer them money, they're coming to me for a loan and we're providing that service. And I tell them, OK, you're approved for one hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do that. Yes. <laughs> That's scary. That's scary, it, right? It is. It is. And so now they're looking at it like, well, what do I do with the money? Said, you told me you're going to start a business. You have everything going. That's what you should use it for. But again, it's the fear. Um, yeah. Two different fears of not having enough money. Now you got too much money. So. Yes, yes, yes. I, I think I told you that that I was that um, I don't get into the, like I have people that do the financial businesses that I know, like a lot of the direct sales. I, I say direct sales, but it's not really direct sales. It's like Amelia, I guess. But that have tried to get me to go in, and I'm like, I don't want to know any part of that. Just it's not my <laughs> thing. I don't want to do anything financial. Because I always think about the fact, and I've always had this frame of mind since I was a single parent, and it was like, it's just me. If I screw it up, my daughter's affected, also I am, right? And so even now I still help her, so I'm always trying to be real careful and not go too far because I'm afraid that I'll end up, especially living in Hawaii where it's very expensive, see a right. lot of homeless people. I don't want to end up in that situation. So I'm really afraid to go outside the box, right? So even, and if you gave me a hundred thousand dollars, I'd be afraid I'd owe this hundred thousand dollars and I wouldn't have made anything of it. Right. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah. So to pay it back, <laughs> like I end up screwing it up. <laughs> yes. That's a few things I've learned from my, to my mentors is the difference with money. The difference is of, um, once people come into money, how they are thinking totally in a different mindset about it from what we have been taught throughout schools, throughout everything else. Go to school, get a really good job, uh, make sure that you're there for 40 years and get that retirement pension plan. That's not happening for 80 percent of us now. There's no more pension plans. There's none of that. Um, if you look at it, things going on right now, Walmart's starting to reduce plan. Um, they're inventory they're starting to reduce their people they're closing down you got uh, starbucks closing down you have a number of different places that are closing down and making things smaller there's times are shifting and if we don't go with those changes then we stay exactly what we were doing when we were told our parents like my mom and dad worked all their lives and before then parents didn't have to work two of them it was only in one household it used to be one income coming in all of a right. sudden hit the 70s Things changed where moms went to work and a lot of women went to work and hit the work field. Um, <laughs> so, good old thing, you know, and, um, it, 
it's gone. And people have to look at a different way now to supplement their income uh, yeah. with all the downsizing going on, with the way businesses yeah. are doing things. And that, again, causes stress. The newness, not yeah. knowing something is, is a lot of times what cause people that stress level. So. Right, right. Uh, so I thought of two things as you were talking about that. One is that the family makeup has changed, right? Yes. It used to be that mom pop kids together and there's the family makeup change women had to work right they had to take care of the family right yeah. so that was one thing that crossed my mind but the other thing i wonder about and i'm not sure about but i wonder if as we transition from more brick and mortar you know the stores as they go online and you can sell like crazy online you got the amazons out there right so yes. i wonder if that is a part of the downsizing and um, having less staff because pe people are, ever since we went through the pandemic, we, we really started using these services because we were at home. Okay. So I wonder if they're just working this way, more electronic and ordering and delivering um, because of that. I just wonder. That's huge because I do a lot of studying on a lot of things like that. Um, for me, looking at from it from that standpoint, is you have business owners who are always in profit mode, and they're making a profit. So if they can cut down a cashier by having us ring up our own food, that saves Hi. money, more money in their pocket. Uh, yeah. You have a number of businesses going to this, and it is about the profit mode. It's it is it's yeah. their business about. People don't understand that a hospital even is a business. They're in there and the main way doctors do their business, prescribe a yeah. drug, have you come back as a patient, a repeat yeah. customer. And even when you go to the hospital rooms, they're the same thing. You have people who are on the higher board and they're doing stocks. Hospitals are run by stocks, so the way they make money, um, everything's a business. You have to look at that. A lot of that you can do virtual, so you don't need as much staff yeah. physically in for that. Mm -hmm. But when you hit a pandemic, you do because people are gonna have to come in, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so um, that brings me to another little bit of a topic I was thinking about. So I'm one of those people that was working in Walmart or at the hospital, and they downsized or whatever. Geez, what are the things? that you know of that we can do to feed our families. Like now we're looking at, we or, or we're making less hours, less money. And like, again, we're afraid, like I said, afraid if you got to take care of this family, you got to feed the family, right? Yes. Um, what are some of the things they can do outside the box that will help them to generate some more income that are safe, maybe safe, nothing, Nothing there else. is a number of different things that we offer as a company that I think would definitely help them out. Um, one thing is that we're showing people how to start their own luxury vehicle business, uh, car business, this car rental business. If you've noticed throughout the, the since the pandemic, what happened with Hertz, what happened to Alamo and all of these places is there was no longer customers for them. We weren't able to go anywhere. People weren't traveling around. So what they did is they started selling off their fleets of cars and they started with most of the luxury vehicles, of course, and everything else to go from there. Um, it's, it's really cut down. So that opened up an avenue for the average person now to open up their business. And we showed them how to um, purchase these vehicles with a loan. And it's always about what we share is using other people's money. Right. And you start using other people's money, other people's efforts and other people's ideas, this works. So someone else came up with this and they thought to themselves, what can we do? Offer luxury vehicles. So you, on the time, you get a vehicle, which is really nice because you purchase it with somebody else's money. That vehicle now is able to be in a ride share type of environment. Whereas if you want to go out and use your own personal car, not do that. It's, it's called a there's certain laws that will not let you do that. And so you have to right. know how to do it correctly. So it's set up. So yeah. it goes on Turo 
you drop your car off somewhere at the gas station or wherever you want to meet the person at the airport and somebody gives you a ride back your car's gone for three four five days you have this certain insurance that we show you how to set up on it it's a mentorship program that you go through so these people are successful who have done it and from there you're able to run two maybe three cars on your own and have a luxury car business and at the same time drive those cars when you're not renting them out right you know i have a friend that did that i don't know if he's still doing it but i have a friend that was doing that he didn't complain about it he told me about it i guess he made some money with it but Mm -hmm. um one thing i noticed is because i travel a lot and every time we get to wherever we're going i gotta get a rental car so i noticed that because of that selling of the fleet who are like hoping to get a car like you got to do it in advance way in advance you don't just wait to the last minute and try to get it when we're traveling and because we're using a specific system you can do that if you go out to like travelocity or one of those places and get one last minute but the cost isn't very much lower but one of the things i also noticed was like here in hawaii there definitely isn't enough cars you can go driving down nimitz past the most of the car rentals well they were there now they're at the airport and there's lines, loads of people waiting for their cars, and there just aren't enough cars also. And that's the reason why um, my friend had gotten into Toro, because yes. he was interested in you know making some money from that. But I see the market out there for these, definitely for these rental cars, because of my travel and getting places and having coworkers that have waited to the last minute and not been able to get a car. Like Alaska is another place that's... Mm-hmm. on cars so yeah. i thought that was interesting it is pretty much nationwide with that so yeah. um it's a very lucrative business and uh, through the mentorship program it they, they get pretty way they get paid pretty well i would say yeah. Um, yeah. Um, won't want to pronounce the averages on here but they they're very nice averages it, it definitely yeah. is more than supplemental income and people can leave their jobs if they'd like to yeah. Um, yeah. But it, it's moms, single moms, like you, what you were mentioning, can do this on the side. Just now they can stay at home and do more at home since we have a lot more at home jobs uh, right. going on. Another one that we also provide is Airbnbs. Um, we invited you to call today. Unfortunately, had technical difficulties. Oh, I wanted to get on there. I was really interested in that. Yes. And so um, Airbnbs is huge right now. And this is right where you're at, Hawaii and a number of other places that you go out and do is it, like when it's the season, tourist season and everything else, these people are paying four or $500 a night for these rooms and hotels. Think about if they had a house, an entire house to go rent for four or $500. They'd much rather do that than to stay inside of one little hotel room, you know? Right. And so um, that's another option that we're providing people with another alternative on how to, again, put supplemental income in, then this income can replace other incomes. They're in profit mode within 45 days of getting this up and running. Um, All of our programs are mentorship programs. So we have people who have been doing it for X number of years. And it's usually throughout the combined 20, 30, 40 to 50 years of experience in real estate and other ones. So they have to be successful to be one of our mentors to give a client. Yeah. Now, I like what you're talking about because there's a give back. (laughs) There's something you earn from it, right? I can speak from experience that I've done a lot of direct sales ML- MLM on the side. And some of them have been free. Some of them have been a little bit of money and some have cost me a bit. And um, I won't say that I've generated a lot from any of them, but I've had a lot of fun, met a lot of people. Um, but if you're in need of money, I wouldn't suggest doing one of those because you may or may not take off. You might hustle, but you know, who's interested, you know, you got to get out in the business of selling outside your family and friends. Mm -hmm. And that's sometimes hard to generate those funds. So those, those are things I've thought of in the past to make a little extra money. And I haven't really made a lot. Well, I've done (laughs) network marketing and all of that. Um, This one, what I'm doing now is really helping out with, I do business loans. I do commercial real estate loans and also personal loans. Um, Being able to help people understand really, again, OPM, other people's money, how to utilize loan. 
when we were growing up, uh, and a lot of people to this day, I'm guilty of it still in the past, and just learn about it. You go out, you get a credit card, and we would use our credit cards to buy groceries, to put gas in, to pay a bill that we couldn't do till the end of the month or something else like that. Whereas rich people, they happen to get a credit card, and just to show you an example of how we do it, is they leverage that credit card. They go out with it and turn it into a cash or get a cash off of it and utilize it for a business. What they can do with us is to come back around, use their credit without using their credit card, get a loan with us. Anyone who has a loan, uh, a credit score of 650 or higher, we're able to help them out with and making $27,000 annually. We're able to help them out with getting a loan of two and a half times their annual income and five times what the bank would give them and offer them. Um, wow. So this allows them now to be able to start a business up using somebody else's money. No risk at all. It's an unsecured loan. So they're not putting up their car. They're not having to put up a house or do anything else like this at all. They're able to go out, like I said, and start the Airbnb for one. Um, and from there, they have the mentorship program. It takes them step by step to learn this process. And it allows people to do things that they weren't able to do using their own money. Right. Okay. Now, I want to talk a little bit about uh, people that, uh, it was a specific thing and, it, and the wave left me. But I was thinking about people that just um, can't even get, they've got a lower credit score, can't get a credit card or whatever. Um, do you have any ideas about how they can um, have better finance, maybe budgeting, maybe yeah. other they, side hustles? There is a little bit about that. We should also start paying ourselves first. A lot of people don't do that. When they get paid, they pay the bills, they pay the car payment, they'll pay the house payment, they'll go grocery shopping, they'll do everything else, and then they go, there's no money left. No money left. <laughs> if you pay yourself first, that is the first top priority. Pay your savings first and then start the other way around. Um, doing things a little bit differently with the budget, yes, you have to set down your goals and understand the procrastination part of not having a budget is stressful. Uh, once you understand um, spending too much on gas, which are high prices these days for a lot of people um, doing everything and you sit down and you have your budget worked out for the month, it is excellent to do that. It's very well to do. Uh, one thing is live with low your means instead of living within your means. Yeah. So you start doing that. You can also go out and get a credit card, a prepaid credit card, and that helps out to build your credit up. Um, you might have to put down $150 to $500 put in their deposit. They're going to keep that money. And from there, you have a credit card. Now, utilize that credit card. It's going to raise up your credit score uh, real slow. We also offer credit card services. I mean, excuse me, credit services that can help people out tremendously as well. I uh, work with a wonderful group of people that can help out there. Okay. Now, I can remember, well, shopping here in Hawaii, like I can shop on base and get the commissary deals, but even commissary, some, some of the stuff is really raised. But I noticed in the grocery stores everywhere, not just grocery store, clothing stores, whatever, things have gone up Yes, right along with the gas. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if, well, my plan, because I can go to the grocery store and plan on I just need some bread or I need whatever small thing. And I come out and it's like $80 later, a hundred dollars later. Like I just came for a couple little things. right? So I think sticking to your plan, like your budget is important. It is. Because before you know it, you've, you've done, you've tapped your funds so much doing these little stops for whatever you needed or whatever that you didn't stick to your plan that it really affects the amount of money you have left in the end. It does. That's huge what you mentioned about that as well as inflation has done a lot of that and jobs, unfortunately, the pay rate is not keeping up with inflation. Um, it went up over 8.5% and it is still going up higher every day that we're talking. They're still raising prices on things and mm -hmm. people have to learn how to supplement their income. 
that. Right. Number of ways to do that. And again, those are the things that we offer is you really have to, to me change your mindset uh, as a just a way of thinking the regular job those are going to be obsoleted soon they're changing the course of the way things are done and if the, the wave of the future now if i go back to kind of a little history is if you looked at way back before the 1700s you had uh, agriculture and you had the people doing a lot of different things with farming and all of this going on if you had land you were set I mean, they had land in generations of people for years, 200 years, 300 years. Then all of a sudden you had machines come out, the industrial age come out and they started replacing all of this. Um, then you went off into a couple of different stages. There was a distribution stage to skip path a little bit forward. Right now, what we're inside of is an age of partnerships. If you mm -hmm. notice that businesses are no longer hiring employees, they're telling you to come partner with us. So they're utilizing your skills as a partner and utilizing that to make a capital gain off of that partnership. Um, that's what business are doing now. The technology age just kind of went through where you missed it. If you missed out on computers, it was Steve Jobs and Bill Gates and all them. Bill Gates got into Microsoft and all that being his head back in the 60s and before it came out in the 70s and 80s. And that's how he made all his money. And so... Yeah. That's where we're at right now is we are in the partnership stage. So if you, yeah. I've learned that if you really want something, you have to find someone who has been where you're at and from there who has what you want. And that's what one of our mentors has. She's been a fabulous lady. This lady has started up her company. Um, and she was a single mom. Well, I mean, she was a mom, mother of three. She's married and had uh, just lived in a car, became homeless, went through a lot of different things. And from there, she's built up a company that did in 2018 over $3.2 billion. 2019, wow. they did over, we did $5.2 billion. Wow. And in 2020, during the pandemic, when everybody else was shut down, and you had banks not lending, you had lenders not lending, all of this, we still did $6.9 billion worth of funding. Um, last year alone, we did $8.3 billion. And this year to date, we're over $7 billion. So she's created something to where I can watch what she's doing. I can learn and I can duplicate this process. Uh, and it's very valuable. To, that's the opportunity she's sharing with other people is to be mentored. Uh, for free, which is huge because you will not get that in most places. Most places want to charge you, so you can earn while you learn. Yes, yes, that's a good idea to not have to pay. I mean, yes. you're kind of, when you have nothing and you're trying to build something, it's it's you know you need a break. <laughs> you know, it seems like all of like I said, all the side business businesses that I've done, there's an, an amount of most of them of me giving up you know, finance in order to gain. And Correct. there was one I did. This is crazy. I did one that was free. The company wasn't even create. It was created, but it didn't even have a name. And so we all took a chance. There was, I had a team of, it was over a hundred. It was like, I don't even remember the number I had on the team, but I, I, it, I had signed someone up who signed a lot of people up. We all signed a lot up, but we all were just there waiting for product. When product came, product was priced pretty well. It was good product that we were working with. It wasn't bad. But what we figured out was that we were carrying the company. Eventually we were carrying the company. We were ordering all the stuff. Mm -hmm. Customers weren't really flocking to it. So we ended up paying out all our money, keeping the company running. And the comp plan looked good. But what happened with the comp plan is that it was impossible to earn what the comp plan showed. It looked good, but right. in actuality, it wasn't. So we were keeping all of us that were on as um, consultants were keeping the company running, there wasn't a lot of customers. So eventually, of course, I left there. But um, the whole point in bringing this up is that you can put in and put in and put, maybe I didn't put it in up front. It was free. <laughs> but as I went, 
I was helping them sustain, you know, yes. we were all helping them sustain. So it's not really necessarily a good deal if I'm paying all my money out, right? <laughs> no, well, you don't want to do that. <laughs> and customers aren't interested. So you really got to find your niche, right? It's got to be, or niche, niche. You got to find that thing that people want, right? Yes, you. That is something that is huge is um, supply and demand has always been something that is mm -hmm. on the marketplace. So um, I can say out of that experience, I'm sure that you're happy. If there would have been a structure in place and you would have gotten residual income off of all the people yes. that you brought in and passive income, that yes. is secondary income to where you could have been retired off of as well. So people have to take those chances at sometimes like yeah. that and to see what happens because yeah. that's huge is to have someone else's efforts helping yeah. assist making your income go up. Right. And that's passive income. It's residual income and it relieves financial stress knowing yeah. that I don't have to get up every day all the way and do work when you have other people that are working for yeah. you. And if I do work twice as hard myself and help those other people out, the more yeah. people you help in life get what they want, yeah, you always turn around and you'll get what you want. So yeah. that's what I learned is to help as many people as possible. Yeah. I think that was the, the concept with the comp plan, but there was a hitch in it. So <laughs> the company making they, money, not you. <laughs> what? Yeah. One month I made, my whole team made $16,000 that month. That's I I got like I think eight hundred or something. It was something really small compared to sixteen thousand, right? Right. So the reason I couldn't get the full benefit of the money was because I didn't have another person on my team that was having as much coming in like me, right? So if I had had that other person on me that had as much, then I would have kicked in and gotten a lot more. But that's a, it's not impossible, but it was impossible for my team. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I, I, it was kind of crazy, but, but another thing you have to watch while I'm talking about it is that it turned out that the whole point of this, this company was more, um, um, online based. It was more geared towards, you know, the, um, gathering people through online. Right. So the whole point of the company I heard was to get email contact to sell to other companies. Oh, so, okay. okay. Yeah. So they got money from selling our contact information to other people. Oh, that's not right. That's, it's not, that's right. not good at all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to get caught up in there with that. Uh, not the well, way you to, have to be careful. <laughs> we do. There's a lot of scams out there and a lot of people, again, are, like I've mentioned, afraid of money um, when I'm offering money online and everything like yeah, that. Uh -huh. <laughs> they say, is it a scam? Uh, yeah. Is this a scam? You know, if you, you know, you're using other people's money. And the best way I can tell you, if uh, I've got scammed in the past when I was younger and it, nine times out of 10, if someone's online asking you for money first yeah. before they give you a loan or anything else, Yes. Don't yes. do it. It's a scam. Nine times out of ten. Wow. Nine and a half times out of ten. Um, yeah. it's a, you don't have to do that. You're going to get funded, and then yeah. the company or the person gets paid who gave you the yeah. funding. There's always a give and take and exchange. Yeah. If you do it properly and right, you know that you're safe with it. The company's yeah. going to be there. Um, that's why I let a lot of people know. Look, we did 8.3 billion last year. Do you think we're going to try to scam you? <laughs> hundred dollars or two hundred dollars asking for upfront fees no yeah. there's no upfront fees there's no cost there's no prepayment penalties and they're like it sounds too good <laughs> it Ooh. does it really yeah. does <laughs> it, it, it is. Is scary. it's scary to have that access to money like that and i don't know i think you really need to work on what you want to do with it though before you do it too because if you gave me all that money right now, I'm really building um, a community right now. That's really all I'm doing and writing my book and doing some other things. So um, I do have one other thing that I'm actually selling, but it's not going to generate a lot of money for me. Right. But um, I like the product for me. So you really got to know what you're going to do with it. Like if I went out and got a hundred thousand dollars, I got to know there's a plan. There's something else. You know, so I like that you guys have that. Um, yes. Well, we also help unsigned artists. 
and have a I program. Love that. USA. Yeah. Um, USA is unsigned artists. Uh, so what we do with that particular program, we help out musicians, we help out poets, we help out authors such as yourself, which you're becoming yeah. writing your own book and instead of going out and having to get a publishing company, you yeah. would be able to publish that book yourself and do that yourself. So the loan can go towards your marketing, it could go towards publishing the book, writing the book and everything else that you would normally have to go out and pay somebody else to do. Um, a lot of people go out and get ghost writers you're writing your own book which is magnificent and fabulous and most right. people don't understand when you're reading warren buffett's book or someone else's book nine times out of ten even donald trump they don't write their own books yeah. they get ghost writers and they sit back like me and you are having a conversation the ghost writer writes that book and wow. we actually read the book and if you're reading a financial book or anything else you're really getting that author's opinion of what Warren Buffett said, which is secondhand information. And Warren right. Buffett's not giving him the actual real information. He's right. giving him tidbits. And so yeah. he's taking tidbits and putting them into the book. Now we don't get the right information filtered down that Jay-Z yeah. is getting from Warren Buffett sitting right alongside of him doing business. Yeah. Right. Those are right. the things that rich people know how to do is position yourselves. Um, what I share with people is, is real sometimes it's scary but it's real important is you might want to look at who your best friends are and who your group of friends are uh, is a statistic and you can kind of go around the group and ask your income is about the same as your five best friends it's the average of your five best friends and so everybody's sitting around and making a hundred thousand dollars and you want to make three four hundred thousand dollars it's going to be real tough because of that pull the attraction and the mindset that they're that the conversations you're going to be having so you have to stretch out and get new friends friends that are making five hundred thousand friends that are making a million dollars friends that are multi-millionaires and they're going to startle you with some of their concepts and the conversations you have but it stretches you to where and again will attract you into the future of getting more money one right. of the important things about money is honestly the little secret most people don't know is you have to want money you have to really want money and it's something people always say oh i want money they go out and buy a lottery ticket oh i want money they go out and gamble. oh i want money why don't you find somebody who has money and ask them questions about it instead of wishing on a lottery ticket wishing on a whim that's not wanting money yeah. putting a game plan down putting it into effect going to work, rolling up your sleeves, planting some seeds and watching those seeds sprout to fruition to where you get paid. So that's a good idea. That is a good idea. That right there. Yeah. Interesting. Rich people use other people's efforts, other people's money and other people's ideas. Yeah. So if you told a rich person something, an idea, they'll sit back and have a conversation with you and they're going to take your idea and put it into action and go make money where we're just sitting having conversations about it. Right. <laughs> now now back to the artist we're talking about musicians yeah. artists painting artists right any, yes any type of artist at all we help oh. them out in their business up and get going it's another mentorship program that we go through and yes it's very very good um we have another program as well multi-families showing people how to invest in duplexes, triplexes, and fourplexes. Oh, and yeah, yeah. Just doing your single family homes that you would be inside of, that's yeah. adding a little bit more risk in there. Um, right. If you happen to have a duplex, a triplex, or fourplex, if somebody moves out of the fourplex, you still got three other renters in there. Right. Those three other renters are cutting down your risk. And at the same time, owning that one building is four times the money of owning just a single family rental. So right. it again, increases your profit level, your return on investment, ROI. These are some good ideas uh, for people that are um, that have a little bit of money. I know if you're just struggling, like if you're working at McDonald's and they're cutting down staff, yeah, you gotta <laughs> you gotta talk to other people and find out. You know what's I'm not judging at all, by the way, because McDonald's. I have a brother that worked there. He was a uh, assistant manager at one point and I mean he did he did fine but he that was his thing McDonald's right right so um but if if you're working there you're not making very much and you 
need to gain more income because you can't raise a family on that, right? Correct. So what ways can you do that? So they need people need options and things to think about and how to uh, extend that in. Have. Um, like I could share with them at that point in time, one of the most beautiful things that I think that um, we call Chief Aliyah, our CEO, has set up is the ability to get a loan. If you're making $27,000 annually, we can get them a loan for, again, about two and a half times their annual income. So mm -hmm. that person right there could never walk into a bank and say, give me a loan for $30,000, $40,000. But yet they can come to us. And we will provide them with a loan of close to fifty, sixty, seventy-five thousand dollars, maybe. Yeah. And if they're eligible with their credit scores, they have to have the right credit scores. Right. Now they're able to use that job to go out and get the loan, not have to pay back that loan itself. Because I share with people is to take out a little bit extra, put it on the side, and let that pay for the loan itself, so that you're not using your work money to pay for this loan. Let the loan pay for itself. That again is using OPM, other people's money, yeah. to pay for the loan. And um, if once they're doing that, now that they started a business, like what I was sharing with you, the Airbnb, yeah. they can right. get off of Airbnb for the first time. They could not do this anywhere else. We right. show them use this loan. They now are another income coming in. The secondary income is more than what they're making at their job, and it's paying for itself. Then afterwards, they've been doing this for six months to a year, they can leave their job and become more entrepreneurs. A lot of people so, have to be into that. So if I'm on a fixed income because I'm retired or disability or whatever, I'm on a fixed income, this is something that works for them also because then they're not using their fixed income to finance yep. what they're doing, right? That's a great question. That is a great question. Yes, it is something that they can utilize. We can do disabled and we can also do um, retired people up to the age of 68 years old. We stop at the age of 68 because we do not want to be committing any type of senior citizen fraud that yeah. might be where the people do. And um, unfortunately, a lot of lenders put it at that limit because of age limit of the average expectancy yeah. is not past 70 75 and getting close to 80 so lenders don't want to risk that money being out there that long but uh, the benefit of being able to help retired people out is most net for them we can supplement their income we can help them out doing airbnbs doing the multi-level family i mean multi-families we can help them out with they have a number of different ways to come in there toro would be perfect for them um, yeah. Starting out a luxury car business, they yeah. don't have to do hardly any work at all. Go drop that car off, have the right. missus or missus drive them back to the house and let yeah. the car be gone for the weekend and make some extra yeah. money supplementing their income. So, yes, we can. Now, I was just thinking about reverse mortgage. You know much about that? They suck. I, do, I don't do many um, residential loans i do everything yeah. inside of non-occupied anything that people do not live inside of i do yeah. those as far as the business goes if they have a gas station and renting out the other side of the, the building i can do all those net yeah. buildings in and ends they call them triples i can do those but the uh -huh. what you're asking about is um, i have a lot of connections that can do reverse mortgages yeah. i understand they're about but uh, I don't speak upon them as much because that's not my full specialty. Yeah. Uh, but I do know about reverse mortgages. You can take that, go out and put that into something, start your own business again, and utilize the money inside of your own house and get the equity out to be able to do yeah. something with it. But it's risky if you die too early. Yes, yes. Because I have, a, I have two people I know of. One died before signing the paperwork. That didn't work out well for the family and then also one that um died shortly after not too long after and so much was owed because of what she took out that the family then had to pay that in order to get the house right so they had to get the money together to to buy the house from the bank because yeah. it was shortly after she had died i mean shortly before she died she did it and then yeah. And that's huge that you mentioned that is that it goes back to the fact that they put up their own house. They put yeah. their house at risk. Um, yeah. That's something that people 
who understand money, they don't put their own personal assets at risk. That's why we do unsecured loans. Uh, we show people how to go out and get assets and keep those assets for themselves, put them into a different LLC, put them into a number of different things to where there's not personally yours. And right. if you do that, you're lessening down your risk. You're putting yourself in a position to win versus being the average person using their house for credit, using their house yeah. to sign on for collateral. Now the bank or somebody else has their house and they own it. If they yeah. happen to die or something happens to it, like you said, goes into probate. Um, all of these things can come on when we don't understand and use the knowledge that is, is out there, but we don't know about it. Mm -hmm. um, to know and not to do is not to know. Right. And that's a gentleman whose name is Leo Pascal. He wrote a book about it. And it's, it's a very enlightening concept. If you say you know something, yeah, but you don't do it, you don't know it. <laughs> <laughs> You willfully don't do it, right? <laughs> right. Yes. You don't know it. It's a procrastination yeah. again. It falls back on Yes. That. I was just thinking about that. <laughs> Another like, thing is, yeah, go ahead. No, you go. You, no. <laughs> it's the bad habits, uh, arrogance. All of these things keep yeah. us from yeah. getting better with finances. Yeah. Uh, thinking you know it and you don't. Right. That's arrogance. It's, yeah. it's not asking people for help, not asking a credit by a person to help you out, get your credit scores fixed or something else of that nature. It's yeah. like that. So, yeah, yeah. I was just thinking about when we were talking earlier about budgeting and um, go, having a plan when you go into these stores or whatever, not getting foolish with it. And um, yeah, you know better. <laughs> I'm, 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 honestly, I must be talking about me, right? Um right. I know, as we travel around the world, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just me, it's my coworker too. Um, we find things in all those places, right? Yeah. And sometimes it's hard not to, because we know we're not going to get this back home, this deal or this item. And, and it's, sometimes it's just like, girl, we shouldn't be doing this. Like we are literally talking to each other. We shouldn't do this, but... We still do it, right? We know better, right? We yeah. still do it. But I've got some amazing things from my travel. So I do like that. But yeah, um, you're right. You know better, but you don't know, right? <laughs> you don't. You don't. So um, yeah. another thing that you have to start doing, I think, off of that, too, is uh, realizing sometimes we don't need some of that stuff, like you said. <laughs> Yeah, um, that, that, comfort, right? that compulsive <laughs> buying, you know. <laughs> Why do we do it? Is it because <laughs> we didn't have when we were coming up? So now we're getting anything we want. Mm -hmm. Um, it can get out of hand sometimes. I, I can't say that every trip I've done the right thing, but <laughs> there's been some where I've been like, oh, screw it. I'm gonna I'm gonna get what I want. Like there's a um in Alaska. Alaska always gets me. There's a Nordstrom's rack in Alaska that has the best stuff in there. Nice quality, pretty decent price. I can come back. I can wear it to work. And um, I do get out of hand in, in Alaska. Most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. So we, we talked a, a lot about finance and you guys' programs and... Um, so a little bit about the stress of having these challenge, financial challenges and uh, the procrastination and um, how it's good to have a budget or a plan and, you know, just be conscious of what you're doing and be in, in the moment and also plan in a planning state of mind. So, um, and having an idea, having some type of um, plan for if, if you go out and, use one of your programs, get that cash, what are you going to do? What is it? Knowing that about what you're doing. And I like how you all have um, mentorship and education to help people when they do go out and do that. And, I, and it sounds wonderful not having to put down the money that you work for every day to keep your family fed, that you're using other people's money, right? OPM. So um, 
I'm just kind of summing up what we've talked about <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> the part of financial literacy and it's teaching people and sharing with that uh, rich people have money work for them. And instead yeah. we work for money. So just changing right. your philosophy, uh, yeah. having a different mindset, having a mind shift, being yeah. knowledgeable of what you're thinking about. Thoughts are things. Thoughts yeah. Things and people yeah. don't realize if you're worried about money, um, it's called the law of attraction. It's your thought is a thing, so the only thing that can come to you next is another like thought, and another like thought, another like thought. So, if I'm going, I'm worried about the car payment, mm -hmm. I'm worried about the gas payment, how am I going to get food? Um, then yeah. you go down the rabbit hole, so That's change. The change your thoughts, change what you're thinking about, change what you want to attract. You are the author of your own story and start writing the book, a different chapter. And that's what we have to do is change our philosophies, change our mindsets. You can stay stuck in that, right? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was, you can stay stuck in that if that's where you've always been. Right. So this mm -hmm. is like a new train of thought, a new mindset. So, yeah. um, cause even like, I'm just going to use myself an example cause it's easy. Cause I can tell on my situation, but, um, coming from nothing and then getting something later in life, being able to have the finance, you need to do whatever you want to, but you're still in that frame of mind of not having enough, not having enough food, not having the clothes you want to wear, looking scraggly when you're going to school or whatever, because you didn't have the money for your family didn't so now i'm getting everything i want especially when it comes to clothing and food yeah. and what i eat what i want right i do what i want i don't have no boss right yeah. so um but it can put you in a situation that um isn't desirable when you could be letting that money work for you you could be using somebody else's money right yes um, yeah correct you are correct on that frame of mind i don't mind putting myself out there because uh, I'm not hurting, but I'm also that afraid person, afraid to, afraid to get more money, afraid to take a risk when it comes to money, knowing that it's just me, right? Yeah. What's going to happen? But I have retirement. I have, I have money that comes in every month, regardless of what, nobody can stop it. Nobody mm -hmm. can affect that money. No matter what I do, I can retire now. And then that money's still going to be coming, but I'm going to need some more money though. It's not enough. Not enough for the way I want to live. But <laughs> right, right. Especially in Hawaii over there in your yeah. nice area. Uh, Lucky you. So <laughs> I'd move. I'd move. I wouldn't retire here. I wouldn't retire and have to put it's hard enough putting out that money on living here because because I work, yes, but I need that money to continue living here because it's so dang expensive. So mm -hmm. I would definitely retire, go back to the mainland somewhere and live. But I mean, it's only so much. I want more because I want to I want to have a, a more comfortable life than but I could survive on what I got. Um, but, yeah, I'm just saying it's a different it's a different mindset to, yeah, yeah. to that point. So it's changing right. my sense. And that's what we're doing today, hopefully. Definitely. I'm hoping people are getting a lot out of this. And it's been a very enlightening conversation. I yeah. always enjoy talking with you and. Um, Learn it from you as well. So, yeah. 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 We'll talk more. We're going to talk more now. And we're going to have you back. And and when we, whenever we do this, we're just going to have our conversation. We got our title, what we were going to talk about, but we go where we go. Yeah. Hi, Sharon. Thank you. Thank you for watching. This is Sharon. No, it's Sharon. Hey, it's a pleasure, Sharon. <laughs> Haven't talked to you in years. It's good to see you. It's somewhat to see you. <laughs> uh, another school friend but that's okay Sharon because I'm trying to talk him into coming to one of the events on the on the yes. reunion I, I don't did, know today I saw that it was um your good friend Telby's birthday so I got yeah. a happy again. birthday Sharon. pleasure happy Sharon birthday, Telby Telby yes. might not be on right now but she will watch so okay. she'll hear you say happy birthday yeah, love that's you good. girl <laughs> she said hey back to you and she no, said no. yeah come <laughs> at least, Thank you, Sharon. appreciate that at least be come to the event at the cab yes it'd be good seeing everybody i haven't seen yeah. a lot of people in years and uh just um, 
sharing good times, seeing people's faces and just, you know, that's enlightening. Um, yeah. Yeah. Was good. yeah. Was really and I'm going to be there. So you need to come. Okay. Looking you forward to it. Person. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You're not over here that much. So be good. Um, come speak about that too. Will befriended me today on Facebook. So I'm going to be talking to him. Befriended a little bit. you or became your friend. Will, be my brother. Yes. My twin. Yes. So I'm getting up here a little bit later, talking to him on Facebook and seeing how he's doing, catching up with him. And oh, seeing that's my, that's my twin. I love Thank him you, so Sharon. much. Love him so much. I don't think he's watching this, but I did invite him to watch it. Um, but and I sent him a link to one of the things you were doing just so he could see it. Mm -hmm. um, but so, yeah, he'll definitely connect with you. You know, he's all about business. So he's the he's the business one of the twins. I'm more the social interaction <laughs> type person. And yeah, yeah, uh, that's one of the half for now. That is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Your personality has always been awesome. So that's yeah. good. You get that energy and all of that. Yeah. that it's been wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I usually only go 15 minutes, but today we went longer. And I'm okay with that because it was good information for people that are out there and want to do something a little different and, you know, want to gain more for their family. So Check it out from the beginning if you didn't watch from the beginning. If you are watching for the first time and you heard something that was amazing or interesting for your friends or family, share it. And please subscribe and like on YouTube so you'll get the, um, the updates on whenever I'm going live. But usually I do the same time, but, but at least you know that they're out there and you can watch them. And I want to thank Mr. Wiley Calhoun. Thank you so much. Thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> like I said, it's always an honor, doctor. So um. <laughs> thanks. So just stay there because when we get off, we'll both still be on together. Okay. 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 All right. Thank you so yeah. much. Thanks for watching, everyone. Everybody, have a great care. day. Thank you again for showing up. Thank you, Sharon. I'll see you later. <laughs>